G'day guys, Elfie here, and welcome to episode three of the Custom Entities tutorial series. By the end of this episode, that model and texture we created in episode two is going to be in Minecraft. This is one of the most exciting parts of this whole process. Um, if you don't have a model and texture yet, go back and watch episode two. Um, we also need Visual Studio Code today and template packs and vanilla packs. So if you don't know what they are, go back and watch episode one and then come back here. Okay. Things are starting to get complex, but we can do this. Don't forget you can pause and rewind the video at any time. First thing I recommend is unzipping my template packs and renaming those folders to something for, that suits your project. So I'm using Genetics BP and Genetics RP. Once you've got them renamed and somewhere safe, I want you to browse to your MEE install folder. For me, that's in App Data Local Packages Microsoft Minecraft education and a whole heap of characters and all sorts of stuff but then you also need to go further into the structure i need you to go into local state games and com.mojang i have this folder pinned to my quick access because i use it all the time in the minecraft install folder there are a couple of folders that are going to be super helpful to us right now they're the development behavior packs and development resource packs folders what you need to do is copy your rename folders into the relevant of those folders. So Genetics BP is going into Development Behavior Packs and Genetics RP will go into Development Resource Packs. The advantage of using these development folders over the standard folders in there is that when a pack is in these folders, it's actually not copied into the world. So any changes you make will automatically apply to any world that that pack is turned on in. When a pack is in those other folders, it actually gets copied over into the world. So you would need to make changes in both the original folder and the world folder. That's why we use the development folders. With those folders now in place, open up Visual Studio Code and then choose open folder and browse to one of those two folders you just copied across. Once you've done that, click on the add another folder option and then browse to the second of those options. All right, I recommend you save this workspace somewhere um, so you don't have to recreate it again. The first thing we need to do is edit the manifest.json files in each pack. This actually tells Minecraft what the pack is, what it actually needs. So load up the manifest.json for the resource pack first. And then I need you to go to a website, uuidgenerator.net in your browser. Copy that version for UUID on screen. Um, don't close the website yet, just flick back to Visual Studio Code and paste that into the top UUID section of the resource pack manifest file. Before you go back and grab another UUID though, open up the behavior pack manifest file as well and copy that same UUID into the bottom UUID section in that file under dependencies. This means that when you add the behavior pack to world, it will drag the resource pack along with it and you don't need to add both uh, manually. Now, go back to the website, hit that refresh button, get another UID, put it in one of the other three UUID locations. You need two UUIDs in the resource pack. We've already done one. And you need two other UUIDs in the behavior pack, one in the top, one in the middle. All right, we've already got that bottom one which is the top one from the resource pack. Make sure to rename and describe your packs and save the files when you're done. With that done, it's now time to get that model and texture that we did in Blockbench last episode into our pack. So fire up Blockbench, open the model project that you had last episode, um, click on the file option, then export and export bedrock geometry. Save this somewhere, doesn't really matter where at this stage, it doesn't actually have to be in that folder. Visual Studio Code makes it super easy to move those files where we need them. Right, fire up a file explorer, um, have your model JSON and the texture file ready to go. Have Visual Studio Code in the background and drag the .geo.json file, that's our 3D model file, into the resource pack slash models slash entities folder. And then the texture into the resource pack slash textures slash entity folder. All right, now we start getting to the meat of it. Now you actually need to start creating files. In the resource pack slash entity folder, create a file for your entity. Mine is drosophila.json. Then think of a Minecraft mob that might look um, like you want yours to and browse through the vanilla packs until you find it. I chose chicken as my entity and opened that file in Notepad. I copy all the text from that chosen vanilla entity into my newly created JSON file in Visual Studio Code. Now, we actually don't want this to reference chicken anywhere. 
So I'm going to change the identifier. Um, and it is recommended you come up with your own namespace so that if Minecraft ever adds a mob in with the same name as yours, it doesn't get confused. To this end, the identifier for mine is eduelfi colon drosophila. So eduelfi is my namespace, drosophila is the model that I'm actually referencing. You generally don't need to edit materials, but I choose to do so. That way I have a little bit more tighter control over what my entity is. And in this case, the chicken has more complicated materials than we need. So I'm just gonna remove that. Alter the texture reference to point to your texture file. Go back to your models entity geo file, that 3D model file in the models entity, and make sure you know what the identifier is in there. If you don't like it, feel free to change it. And then take that model identifier back to the entity file and put that in the geometry reference. At this stage, I suggest you delete any of the animations or script sections if they're in your um, entity file. We will cover them more fully in a later video. Um, and I like to change render controller reference to point to my entity as well. So basically anywhere that this file used to reference chicken, it now references Drosophila. Finally, in this particular file, remove the two lines in the spawn egg brackets and replace them with what's on screen now. Make sure you get the quotes, colons, and commas correct. Once you have those two new lines in, feel free to choose the color you want the spawn egg to be. Visual Studio Code allows you to do that. Save your file. This one is really important to us. It tells us what we need to put in the pack for Minecraft to actually create our entity in game. We already have the texture and geometry, but the materials and render controllers are next. Let's start with materials. In the material folders, there is a file called entity.material. In this file, I have the basic structure of the materials file and the three most common types of material you probably want to reference. Each of these materials has special properties when it comes to rendering your entity in game. Emissive Alpha uses TGA files and makes it look like the entity is lit up in the dark. Think spiders in their eyes or phantoms in their eyes. Um, alpha test allows entities to have semi-transparent sections. Um, and entity is just a plain old entity like all those other boring entities in Minecraft that don't have anything special in terms of their rendering. Now I want this entity to possibly have some transparent sections down the line, so I'm going to delete the others and change the name Custom3 to be Drosophila because that's what we referenced in the materials section earlier. Right, now we've got to create the render controller. Make a file in the resource pack slash render controllers folder called entity name dot render underscore controllers dot json. So mine's Drosophila dot render underscore controllers dot json. I pull up the same render controller for the entity that I was templating before, chicken, copy the insides of that into my newly created file. I need to change the materials section of mine because I don't want different materials for the different components at this stage. In my case, everything just references the default we put in the entity JSON file at the start. Um, so at this stage, I recommend leaving everything default. We can go more into specifics later on what this stuff does. The materials section in the render controller if you don't have anything special going on, should look like the same as what is on screen now. All right, so that's the resource side of things done. Now it's time to work on the behavior side and actually define our entity in there. Create another JSON file in the behavior pack slash entities folder with your entity's name. So minus drosophila.json again. Um, I took the chicken entity behavior pack file and took the insides of that and put them into my file again. All right, so I've used chicken everywhere because that's mostly what I want mine to behave like. Um, and I've taken all of that and then I've just changed all the references to chicken to Drosophila. We're not too concerned with all of the innards of this file just yet. We'll edit these more later, but there are some things we definitely need to change. First off, the identifier needs to be the same as the identifier we chose back at the beginning, and don't forget to include your namespace. Right now, we don't want any component groups, so delete anything between that pair of brackets. We will come back to this later. What this allows is entities to behave or have different things happen to them based on other stuff. Um, but we just want all our entities to be the same, or we just want that entity to be in Minecraft. All right, so delete all of those component group stuff, leave the component group section, but delete everything in it. For our goal right now of just getting the entity to appear in Minecraft, we actually don't need to do anything within the component section. We will have to revisit this later when we work out how we want our entity to behave, but for now, leave all the components alone. Right, finally, we need to manage events in this file. So scroll down to the bottom. Um, technically, you don't need any of these events as we don't have any component groups 
Uh, so every entity will just be the same. With that done, it's time to see if we were successful. This footage is recorded in Bedrock, not EE, because when I recorded it, EE wasn't updated to 1.17 yet. Um, open Minecraft, create a new world, and apply your behavior pack to it. This will automatically add the resource pack too, but I check anyway. Um, launch your world, search in your inventory for your entity. Hopefully your egg appears. Grab it and spawn your entity. Hopefully here is your entity. Congratulations, you just created your own Minecraft entity. Nobody else has one just like it. It's yours. That brings us to the end of this episode. Don't forget you can come back and rewatch any parts you need to to scrub up on. Tune into the next video where we stop our poor entity looking so darn lifeless and add some of those animations. If you're having issues with this episode in particular, please check the common issues link in the video description. After you've done that, if it doesn't help, reach out in the comments section below on Twitter at EduElfie or on the Minecraft Education Discord group. There is a link in the video description. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.